Hi everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews and my June Makes video. So for the month of June, I tried to focus on what I was saying was an aquatic theme and that was related to the fact that my Disney Bounding and the Bedroom project, I was working on Ariel. So for Ariel, it's actually going to be spanning two months, but this month I made the bra and underwear of the set. So let's take a look at that. So here is the Ariel bra. Uh, if you missed it, I do have some videos up on my channel already that I can link in the iCards above so that you can get an idea of the construction process of the bra. So the, the shell portion of the cups themselves are based off the AFI Atelier Exquisite pattern. Um, and then the interior sort of bra tool cup is actually I think it's a modification of the Black Beauty bra pattern. Um, and then I used the AFI Exquisite frame on this as well. So I really like how this turned out. What I've done is this sort of foam cup shell and then like the traditional cup underneath it. And I think it looks really good. It has that look of that sort of like bikini style shell bra, but I still feel really supported and got my full coverage and everything that I prefer to have in my bras. So this is definitely one that I can go ahead and wear and add it into my normal rotation, even though it looks quite special and specific. For the fabric on this, I've gone ahead and dyed my own. So this is a stretch satin that I purchased from Spandex World, and then I've dyed it with some acid dyes in the color Royal Purple from Dharma Trading Company. And I think it turned out really well. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm sort of like tilting it in the sun, so I'm hoping that you guys can sort of see the nice lovely sheen that we're getting off of there. And then I just added a lot of top stitching in there to really like accentuate that shell shape. So really happy with how this bra turned out. It it was definitely adventure. Uh, I made it not knowing if it was going to work. That's kind of the way that I'm enjoying sewing right now is just getting an idea in my head and then I enjoy the process of sort of like working it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, great. So yeah, this is the bra portion of the Ariel set. And then to go on the bottoms, I just have some Eva panties, and this is a pattern from Studio Costura Shop. I did do some modifications to these in order to help them fit me a little bit better. Um, I had sewn this up once before and they were not a particularly great fit, so I had to go ahead and lengthen these in the front as well as the gusset, and now I'm thinking they look really really good. So for these, I've sewn the main main portion of it is like a lightweight stretch satin um, in this really beautiful teal color. So the stretch is running side to side, uh, not a lot of stretch top to bottom, which is okay since my most underwear patterns are drafted for just side to side stretch. And then along the bottoms as well, I have some more stretch satin in sort of like a mint color. I wanted this to sort of mimic the look of Ariel's tail where you have like the dark green is the main portion of the tail and then the fins are sort of a lighter color green. And I think it, it works really effectively. So this set is actually a lot of fun. Like clearly it looks like Ariel with these different color stories, um, but I think it's wearable enough that I could totally wear this under clothing and it not be too ornate like the Jasmine set was. So I really enjoyed making Ariel. Um, and then next month we'll focus on the corset for this pattern, which will really, I think, amp the look up much more. So we'll take a look at the bras first. The first bra that I have is one that I made using the mermaid kit from Bra Builders. This was a kit that she released last June or July, I think it was, and I just never got around to making one for myself, even though I made a sample for bra builders. So this is one that I get to keep, and I'm really excited that I finally made it. So for this bra, I've used the pattern that I've hacked from the Black Beauty to turn it from a horizontal seam to a vertical seam. So if you're looking for a similar bra pattern to this that doesn't require self-drafting, I would say look at the Devonshire bra from Orange Lingerie, um, the Jessica bra from Beware, and I believe, I believe that AFI Atelier has a bra as well. I don't think it's the chic but I, I believe they have a vertical seam pattern as well. So I'll try to link all of those down in the description box below if you're wanting to sort of make something similar to this. So there is a vertical seam here. I worked really, really hard to get the pattern matching on here. So this sort of blue filigree does cross the seam line and I made sure to line up my scallops along the top and get that blue filigree crossing over at exactly the right place so that it looks like one continuous um, piece going across the top of the bra. I did center in another of those designs right in the bridge here, and then I carried those blue down to the side frame as well. 
So this is something that I've never done before but I cut my side piece maintaining that scalloped edge. So when I sewed this bra together, I sewed my back band to my lining, and then I had this portion where I just sandwiched over top and zigzagged down to secure it into place so that you get to see that scalloped edge. It does limit the stretch just a little bit in the back because this section is non-stretched now, but it doesn't really change the overall fit at all for me. Um, but I just kind of liked the way it looked to have this sort of blue traveling up the sides and around and stuff like that. So that's, that, that was the one part of this bra that was sort of an experiment and I really like how it turned out. Um, so to go with this, I've actually used Aruba Aqua findings from Bra Makery. I thought I, I liked these findings with this kit because it's a little bit more on the green side. I think this kit originally came with the color set Ariel that Bra Builders custom dyes, um, but um, the, the back band is that Ariel blue color, but I, I liked bringing in this sort of a little bit more green tone color because it made it look more sea-like to me. So that's the outside. Oh, I also did a gothic arch on here so you can see that the elastics are coming to the center and crossing over. Um, I don't do a gothic arch super, super often, but every now and then I like throwing it in. Just a fun little detail. Um, for me, it doesn't have any specific benefit. I just like it because it's pretty. So that is the inside of the bra. And of course, I had the little um, shell charm that came with the kit, which definitely brings this into a mermaid feel. I think this is such a lovely lace and I'm really excited that I finally have one that I can wear on my own. <laughs> Next up, I have a really beautiful lace that I purchased from the TaylorMade shop. So for this bra, I did a very similar pattern to the mermaid bra I just showed you because it worked out so well. Um, again, that's a two-piece vertically seamed cup. And the reason I wanted to do a vertical seam like with this one, same as the last one, is that the embroidered motif on this was, was pretty tall. Um, this design looks like crashing waves, which is why I chose it for this month, but the design was really tall. And so I needed to make sure that I had something that was allowing me to fit the entirety of that design in the cup, because I really didn't want to break it up at all with any horizontal seams. Uh, so for this bra, I paired it with some self-dyed findings. The colors of these findings are Sea Breeze, and it's a dye that I purchased from Pro Chemical and Dye. They'll be linked down in the description box below. I thought that this color blue matched really well with this lace. So this is the same color dye that I used on my Jasmine set, and I just dyed it with a little bit more saturation so that I got more color burst to it. Um, I do find that this particular lace is a little bit scratchy, which is not something I'm used to with embroidered tulle laces, but I don't know that I would wear this under something that was really, really slinky or anything like that. But it was such a gorgeous color and I loved the embroidery on there that I was willing to sort of overlook the fact that the lace is a little bit scratchy. Uh, on the inside, I've lined it with sheer cup lining, which is super comfortable for me against the skin. Uh, it's 100% nylon. I've never had any issue with it. So that really like negates any scratchiness against the actual physical skin. It's more um, as it relates to the garment that I'm wearing on the outside that you might see some issues with scratchiness. So not a lot more to say about this because it is just the basic vertical seam cup like I had already show shown you. So that is my crashing waves bra. And the last bra that I sewn this month was using a kit that I purchased from Lilypad Designs called Aquasign. And I believe she still has this available. I'll try to link it down below if it is. So I picked this kit to make this month because I thought that the lace really looked like seaweed, but then after I made it up, it really reminds me of a butterfly. So I'll pop up a picture over here of a butterfly that I saw at a butterfly sanctuary close to my home. Um, after I finished this bra, I immediately thought of that picture. So it's not only an aquatic theme bra, it's also a butterfly bra. So for this pattern, or for this bra, I've used the AFI Atelier Exquisite pattern. So I only used lace in the three inner cup pieces, and then I used sheer cup lining for the power bar. The main reason for that is just because I only had a yard of the lace and I wanted to not waste it all. Uh, and I just couldn't think of a way to get lace onto the power bar and use the lace economically. I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I could have done an overlay where the scallops continue right here, but yeah, it's fine the way it is. I actually quite like this look on me because I have quite wide 
uh, roots. So my roots are a lot wider than they are taller. So I'm always constantly squishing my patterns down, but making them wider. And I think that like disrupts the proportion of it. So the fact that this sort of powder bar is the same color as the frame here, it sort of disguises the fact that my root is so wide um, and sort of narrows it and makes it a little bit more proportionate. So I, I, I quite like the effect and it's something that I think I might do again. Uh, so I did use the lace in the bridge section here because I wanted it to just sort of like focus in the center front to be the star and then this stuff sort of like blend away into oblivion on the sides. So I am ecstatic with how this bra turned out. I think it looks really, really good. On the inside, I have lined it with black sheer cup lining. That's what came in the kit, as well as the black findings. So the bra looks very, very black on the inside, and I just love that pop of color that looks really shimmery and beautiful. So this, I think, is my favorite bra from the month of June, as you could probably tell. So the last three projects I have to show are all swimwear because I'm gearing up for the next month to be sort of like the swimwear month on my channel. And so I wanted to make some swimsuits so that I could film some different techniques for videos. So the first suit that I have here is made using the coral swimsuit pattern from Bikini Design Club. Uh, I was trying to recreate this Pinterest inspiration suit and I think I got fairly close with this. Um, I did shoot a project log when I was making this that will go up next month. So I'm not gonna cock into too much detail about all the pattern alterations I made because that's all gonna be included in that video. So it's kind of a maze to get into. Right now I have it with these really, really long straps on here that sort of go up over the shoulders, cross into cross in the back, and then come back around towards the front. And then it closes with that swimwear clicker. Um, I like how it looks. It looks like a belt. However, I think that the more I wear this suit, that belt starts riding up further and further and further. So I think what I'm going to do is probably cut these off really short and just turn it into a straight halter neck with a swimwear clicker in the back, which is closer to the original design. So that's just going to be cutting off the straps probably about here. I just have to figure out and then adding that gold clicker into there so that it'll just sort of tie in the back and then it'll be a completely open back design, which I think will be really, really sexy. Um, so this is, as I said, the coral pattern. I used swimwear fabric from Spandex World in the light mint colorway and I will link the fabrics down below as well. On the inside of it, it's fully lined swimsuit. I really enjoyed how this was made. It was really interesting. And uh, I put in some swim cups as well, just for a little bit of um, security on here because it's such an open neckline. I felt like I kind of wanted just a little bit there to help bump stuff out and make sure it was being kept into place. So that is my coral swimsuit. Next up I have, you know, what is for me a pretty basic swimsuit, but it's a pattern that I've made a couple of times now, and that is the Bravo Swim One pattern. I purchased this pattern from Bra Builders, but of course it was designed by Monica of Bravo Bella Bras. Um, I just think that Bra Builders is the place that's carrying her patterns right now. So this is a, you know, basic sort of tank style swimsuit with princess seam. So it's running from the armpit and there's a princess seam line running down the front. Um, the fabric I've used on this is called Cupcake Frosting. And this is a ribbed swimwear fabric that he purchased from the tailor-made shop. I believe, I purchased this last year, but I believe last time I was on her shop, I saw that she brought it back. So she has it in this color and then she brought back a bunch of matte ribbed swimwear knits as well. So I might go and get it. I will say that this, this particular color of this fabric is a little bit difficult to sew with. So I've sewn this fabric up in olive and burnt orange as well and those I had no problem with whatsoever but uh, I've made I've made an axis tank out of this fabric and now the swimsuit and for some reason in this color of this fabric my machine did not like working with it so I struggled a bit and it was one of those things where I was struggling so hard I just wanted to be done but now that it's done I really like the finished suit and it's something that I can see myself wearing all the time so like I said the, the front is three pieces, the main center piece and the two princess seams down there. It has a relatively um, 
high coverage leg hole cut. I might like to cut this up a little bit higher on my pattern, but it's it's perfectly fine for now. It's not too low, it's not too high, it seems perfect. And in the back, it is just a standard sort of like scoot back swimsuit. So hopefully I'm popping in some pictures over here of me wearing it. One thing that always confuses me about swimsuits on the back is that the back is always cut really, really small because this sort of like you really opens up once it's worn on the swimsuit. I don't, I've seen a lot of patterns do that. So I don't, it must be a thing. It must be a swimsuit pattern thing. Um, but yeah, that is this Bravo Swims one suit. So this is gonna go with its orange and olive brethren. It's it's a suit that I'm gonna wear all the time. I also like wearing it as a bodysuit in the summer months with just a pair of shorts. I think it's a nice, fun summer thing to wear and it's really light and easy and breezy. And then the last suit that I worked on this month is another pattern from Bikini Design Club, and this one is the Epic Swimsuit. Uh, as I had mentioned in my plans video, I wasn't entirely sure that I was going to like how I looked on me uh, making it. I really like how it looks. The only problem is I think I need to work a little bit on the bum, uh, but everything else I think looks really great. And so for this swimsuit, I've done it in two colors. I've done it in gray and yellow because it's kind of going for that Pantone look. It's a little hard to tell laying on the table here because this is such a complicated suit. Um, hopefully I'm popping in a picture of some video over here of me wearing it, but it's a really, really interesting design. I really enjoyed making this suit just because it was fun to see how it came together. Like it is a giant puzzle piece. It's pretty tricky to get into. I'm not, so the way I'm getting into it now is stepping in through the neckline and then sort of like pulling the bust over and then my arms through. That seems to be the easiest way, but I mean, it's a really interesting design and I think I, I enjoyed doing it. So this is what it looks like from the front. Let's see if I can flip it over. So here it is from the back. So you can sort of see how it's made. Um, these straps attach from the back. They cross around in the front, then they cross back to the back and then attach up here at the neckline. And then it has a skinny strap that sort of attaches to the front bodice, but then again crosses to the back. And then there's like a channel sewn in there that goes through the yellow strap and then attaches to a ring that is on the bottom piece here. So this ring is actually a spacer from an old platter drive, hard drive that Tony has taken apart. So I don't know how, how um, well it'll hold up in water, but I really just wanted to try the suit to see if I could make it for now. I just enjoyed the process of making it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the look at all of my June makes. Let me know down in the comments which item was your favorite and I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.